All right, so what we're going to do is solve another optimization problem. What we have here is a fence that's being built against a wall. It's to enclose a rectangular area of 900, and we're going to say 900 square feet. Units are important after all. And what we do there is we're trying to find the dimensions that will minimize the cost. Now, so we know, what we know is the cost of each side that is perpendicular to the wall the Y sides that I have listed here, and I call them Y because they're vertical, is $2 per foot. And the horizontal side that is parallel to the wall that I have labeled as X for the number of feet is $9 per foot. So Y is the vertical distance and X is the horizontal. So we have a couple things happening here and the goal is gonna be to come up with a cost function that only is in terms of one variable. So I'm just gonna tentatively select X as a variable because that's what we're most comfortable with, but that might change as we as the problem evolves. So what we have to do first is come up with a couple equations, a couple expressions. So we know that the cost is equal to, well, let's see. The cost of the left-hand side is 2Y, right? Because that's $2 per foot and there's Y feet. Likewise, the right side is 2y, and the horizontal side is 9x. So that would be 4y plus 9x. So that's a good starting point, but we have too many variables here. Our goal is to only have one variable in our expression so we can actually do calculus to it. So our goal is going to have to be to replace that somehow. But what other information do we know that's going to help us with that? Well, we do know that we have a, can I call it a constraint? because a constraint is something that has to happen, right? We know that the area is 900. Well, what is the area in terms of our variables? That's x, y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve that equation for y because that's gonna tell me, that's gonna give me some information about how I can write that cost function in terms of only x. I know that y is really 900 over x all the time, no matter what. So that means my cost function which I'm now going to call C of X because now I've whittled it down to one variable, is four times, now this was Y, but it's going to be 900 over X now, plus the original 9X, and I'm actually going to simplify that somewhat. That's really 3,600 over X plus 9X. Now, in order to analyze this, though, I need to get this derivative ready. So notice I'm not taking derivatives yet, so I'm still writing C of X. That's going to be 3,600 x to the negative 1 plus 9x. So there is our original cost function. I'm going to box that because that might be important later. Who knows? So now we know maxes and mins occur when the derivative is equal to 0. So take the derivative. And that's going to be negative 3,600 x to the negative 2 plus 9 because the derivative of 9x is 9. And I know that things happen when the derivative is equal to zero. So we have that. And now what I'm going to do is rewrite it in the algebra form to make this a little bit nicer to solve. And then my tip would be, I'm going to add the negative 3600 x squared. I'm going to add 3600 over x squared to both sides. I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And as luck would have it, it's actually a nice answer. It looks like something happens when x is equal to 20. So this is our critical number. Now, that doesn't quite answer the question yet. We just know that x equals 20. While we can be reasonably convinced that the minimum is 20, we have a plethora of ways to verify that this is a minimum. So... One thing you can do is verify that it's a minimum. And, you know, since we just had a discussion about absolute extrema, remember that when you're not given an interval, you can kind of make one for yourself if you're trying to find a min or a max. I'm just going to say, here's a chart of x versus values of c of x. Now, c of x, just because we need it again, was 3600 over x. 
plus 9x. So if x is 20, I have 3600 over 20 plus 9 times 20. So that gives me 180 plus 180, which is 360. So is that a minimum? Well, we'll find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a number that's below 20 and pick a number that's above 20 to see if the function is higher on both sides, which we want because we want it to be a minimum. I'm going to pick nice numbers like 10 and 30. You can pick whatever you want as long as one is lower and one is higher. And if we compute this out, you get 450. 360 plus 90 is 450. And if we plug in 30, I believe we get 390. Yes. So that means that we more or less have verified that 360 is the minimum. So the minimum cost is $360. So that answers one question. We didn't quite answer the dimensions question. Well, we know that x is 20, and x represented the horizontal side of the rectangle. So actually, our original picture wasn't exactly drawn to scale. It's just drawn very generically to show that, yes, the horizontal side is different than the vertical sides. So as far as finding y, well, we know that y is equal to 900 over x from before. Or we know that the area was 900, so we can easily solve for that. And that gives us 45. So that means that the dimensions of the rectangle are 20 by 45, and the minimum cost is $360. So I hope that this example helps you to go through how to build the function and then be able to use calculus to analyze and whatnot. So I hope you found this helpful, and I will be posting more, so please watch more, and thank you for watching.